Welcome to this episode of the Structural Engineering Channel, a podcast focused on helping structural engineering professionals stay up to date on technical trends in the field and to help them succeed in their careers and lives. In this episode, we are talking to Chris Kervin and Mike Howran from Applied Bolting Technology. Chris is the VP of Field Bolting Specialist and Mike is an Applications Engineer. And in this episode, we'll be talking to them about structural bolting methodologies, standards, and specifications. I'm your co-host, Matt Picardle. And I'm your co-host, Kara Green. Now let's jump into our conversation of the week with Chris and Mike. Chris and Mike, first, welcome to the show. We're so happy to have you on today. Could you tell us a little bit more in your own words what both of you do? I'm the application. I'm Mike. I'm the application engineer for Applied Bolting Technology. Uh, basically, I do a lot of the engineering around here, as well as uh, you know, meet with engineers and field, teach them how to bolt. Basically. Chris Kervin, Applied Bolting, uh, Vice President, Field Bolting Specialist. Uh, we help engineers and field interpret specifications and try and improve their bolt up program on site. Yeah, thanks for both of you for coming on. Uh, we wanted to definitely deep uh, deep dive into to bolting for the structural engineers that aren't too familiar with the applications of it. Uh, so Mike, could, uh, could you talk about some of the differences between uh, torque and tension? I know engineers, what's most important to them is to get that tension on those bolts. Could, but they may not be too familiar with the nomenclature. Could you go into some of the, the differences between those two? Sure. Well, so you need torque to achieve tension because basically torque is a, is a rotational force. It's how hard is it to turn a nut, basically. I have to torque the nut so I can actually squeeze the steel and create the tension within the fast. So torque is a way to achieve tension, but it is not what's, what's required for AISC or CSC. You know, this is the latest AISC RCSC uh, manual. It's a free download at boltcouncil.org. And this has all the rules of how to do structural bolting and has the minimum values. So while engineers require a certain amount of tension in the bolt, the field has to apply a certain amount of torque. Unfortunately, the field often confuses the two and thinks if I expend this amount of torque, I will achieve this amount of tension. And that doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Now, if you'd like, I could show you uh, how that, basically a demonstration of that. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, that would right. be great. So this is a Skidmore Wilhelm hydraulic tension calibrator. It basically tells you, you know, you tighten a bolt into it and it tells you how much tension you've achieved, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'll tighten a bolt. I'll tighten this rusty bolt. I have a brand new bolt here. This is brand new. We buy them new, we put them out by shipping, and we let them rust up just for this demonstration. It's about five days of exposure to our beautiful Vermont weather, <laughs> which might be different in Plano or in San Diego. So what I'm going to do, it's a 7 8 A325 bolt. The minimum required bolt tension for this, for this bolt, as per AISC RCSC, is 39,000 pounds. So that means I got to bring that right about here. Now you can't really see my finger, right about there. Did you read the 40? Yeah. Yeah, so that needle's got to go there for that bolt to be added properly tight. I'm going to apply 500 foot pounds to it. Let me get it. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to prove out uh, torque and tension. Now, I'm going to go to a quick computer screen that's going to show you torque is rotation. It's how hard is it to turn a nut. It's measured in foot pounds. Tension or pretension is measured in pounds. And that's the one we want. We want the torque. We want the tension, not the torque. They're related, they're related this way. T equals PKD. Your input torque, is your achieved tension, your nut factor, and diameter of the bolt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this bolt with 500 foot-pounds, go to a close-up, and see if we can get to that, how close we can get to that 40. Before you get there, Mike, so 
This gun's going to sense 500 foot pounds and shut off. What doesn't it know? Doesn't know how much tension has been achieved. It just applies that whatever torque you're telling it to. Right. What do we mm -hmm. say that, Mike? We said at 500. We're going to put 500 foot pounds on it and see where we land. Give it a bump. All right. So I didn't, I didn't get anywhere near 40. Looks to be like just south of 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah, so like half. Yeah. This is what we got to work with. T equals PKD. My input torque is 500. My tension, let me write that down. So 500, uh, this mark is not good to get on. Yeah, sir. Sorry about this. This is where we're gonna edit this part out. <laughs> and, and for our podcast listeners, they basically have a Skidmore machine where they put in a, a rusty nut and they're supposed to tighten it and they have a, a torque gun and they essentially torque the, the nuts uh, with the specified torque, uh, 500 foot pounds. But as the engineers, we wanted to specify, let's say it was the, the 40 kip mark or the 40,000 pound mark. And it didn't get there, even though uh, we're specifying that and they thought the torque gun with 500 foot pounds would, would reach it. So it's not exactly doing it in this case. All right, so my input of 500 foot pounds didn't get my, the minimum required tension. So my minimum required is 39,000, essentially 40, uh, with a 78 inch A325 bolt. I've only got four terms here. So if I wanna, if I wanna meet, achieve the minimum, Something's got to get right. I could possibly increase the torque. More torque would mean more tension. That that would work. How much more? I don't know. Uh, P thirty nine thousand. There's no wavering on that. That is the minimum. AISC says I want thirty nine thousand pounds on every seven inch A three twenty five bolt. If I call AISC and say, "Hey, how about 18? They're gonna say, "Put your boss on the phone. You're fine." Right? P seven eighths. The bolt is what it is. So the only thing we have left is that K, and K is a nut factor, it's friction. It's where the rusty nut threads are grinding against the rusty bolt threads. It's where the rusty nut is grinding against the rusty washer. So when you want to alleviate friction, you lubricate. All right. And for all of our listeners, he's currently removing the rusted bolt from the Skidmore machine. All right. Pat, hold on one second. We'll have to have, have you ask the question again. Our system's far enough to shut down the wrench volume, but we can't hear you over the wrench. Yeah, hold on. No worries. Can't even get it off. <laughs> it has a high K value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try and see if I work it out. So this is torque. This is torque. I can't even get it off. So what's going to happen is we're going to break the bolt. And I'll either have to do all that again. Let me get you a rusty bolt, Mike. Or in this kid one. Ah, all right. It's a live show. These things happen. I destroyed the bushing too. Well, you have to have to <laughs> all right. So this happens. It's actually happened to me in a meeting once, and it's the way it goes. Uh, fortunately, we have other tool. We have other skidboards here. We're just going to fire up another one if you don't mind. 
or do you think that's going to be way too much work? I think we side? could probably address some of the questions that we have while they're getting a okay. new skid more and bolt. Um, which leads me into my next question, Mike. Um, so the United States Construction Code, AISC and RCSC has not allowed a standardized torque value for structural bolts since the 1950s. Um, however, you believe that there's this is still the predominant way to install structural bolts. Can you talk to us more about this and maybe, you know, what you see in the future? All right, because basically, uh, you know, everyone's grown up with torque. Whether you worked on your old car, your own car when you were 17 years old, you uh, you had to apply some sort of torque value out of some sort of manual. It also a lot of it bleeds over from the uh, the piping industry. Pipes piping is always bolted with torque. They are they are issued torque tapes, you know. And you go online, you can find any one of these books. You know, this is free from Ajax book, Ajax bolt, and there's some torque tapes. They, they're, they're easy to find. You'd be able to find a torque table on your smartphone in about four minutes or 44 milliseconds. So everyone thinks that way. And that's so it's, it's just always done that. The earlier editions of the uh, RCSC actually didn't even have a calibrated wrench or torque installation method allowed. It was taken out in the late 70s and put back in in the 80s with a whole lot of rules. And those rules are, you will test your tool with the hardware you have three times for every, for every unique faster. When I say unique, I mean one, a single production lot of nut, a single production lot of washer, and a single production lot of bolt. So let's say it's A, B, C, those are a lot of those. I take three of these fasteners, put them in a skid more, apply whatever, torque I think is gonna work. And then hope that needle goes above 40 or above 39 if minimum, but 40, 41. And I have to do that every day. And I have to do that for every tool. If I have a different tool, I have to, I have to take three bolts and test it, test that tool with three bolts and every day as well. So torque installation, what used to be, you know, just go get a torque value has turned into test bolts continuously. <laughs> Because if I get a different production lot of nut for, this, for the same washer and, and a bolt, I have to test it again. The AISC RCSC requires more testing than any other national standard. In Europe, you would test, say, this a seven eighths by three and three and a quarter. You would have to test one length, and then you don't have to worry about three and a half and three and three quarters. Mm -hmm. But AISC, RCSC says test every unique faster uh, assembly three times a day with every tool under whatever bolt condition it's gonna be. So this one's a brand new bolt. If I had, uh, you know, if this bolt didn't have the shiny, uh, basically quench oil left over from uh, processing, uh, I would have to test it in the condition it is to be bolted in. And that's a problem when torque is used, is that someone might do all the testing with a bolt of new, but in the field, that's not, that's not really what happens. They'll take a bolt, stuff it into the steel, say, we have to go do some other work, we'll final tension it later on, but that K factor has changed by that time. And that torque that might've worked is no longer going to work. I don't know if that's too much. No, I uh, that think makes that's sense. perfect. Terrific. Let's try this one more time. Take a different skid more well known. That's 500. Again, the gun will shut off. All right. Did a little better this time. So, looks like just south of 30. Looks like 27, 28. Gotcha. So that, that and this is still very... a rusty bolt, right? I'm sorry? This is still a rusted bolt, correct? Rusty bolt, yeah. So it's the same bolt lot as the other one. Yet the other one only gave me, what, 15 and broke my skid bolts.
Let's bind it up again, Rob. Yeah. All right. It's not gonna work. What? Bring it up to 900, twist in the two. Well, I'm gonna take it off. Take it to yeah. 900, twist it right in two. All right. Fortunately, two times, not a charm. <laughs> So we have a lot of these rusty bolts. We can do this as many times as you like. <laughs> Let me see. I, I, I think it's a part of the game. That's what happens to rely on torque to see that your bolts have been tensioned, is that you can see that it's not created on the bolt, but the tension you're desiring that's mandated, that's part of the specification, we're not getting it. We should give it one more time. Let me have a go at it. You have a go at it because obviously I'm not. See if I have the magic touch to make torque not Touches. work. <laughs> but this is what's happening. You know, we have 900 foot pounds of torque in reverse. We're trying to loosen the bolt. And just because we're applying a torque doesn't mean the bolt's been tensioned. All right. So let's, again, we've got a bolt that's been left outside of our warehouse here for five days in Vermont. Not the worst environment, but we can see that if you give me a tight shot, Mike that there's some red rust on there. That red rust, which only takes about five days again, conspires against us. So we won't be able to hit the men required bolt tension, but we'll hit the torque. And again, the torque is our interpretation, 500 foot pounds. We're gonna see if that works. And again, the gun when it senses 500 foot pounds is gonna shut off for us but it's not gonna know how much tension that's been developed. The Skidmore, this bolt tension measuring device is gonna know how much tension has been achieved, but it doesn't care. It doesn't know how much tension has been applied. And as Mike is drawn out for us in the back, go backwards for me, Mike. We're after 39,000, 7 8 8 3 25 volts. We're applying 500 foot pounds and we hope to achieve the specified 39,000 for the 7 8 inch A325 volt. All right. Close, Close up. All right. Third attempt. This time we've achieved 25,000. So for our experiment today, we've achieved everything from I think we had 18,000 yeah. to 30,000. In this case, yeah. just about 25. Now, what's going to happen to the bolt and the seal? Is the engineer going to say, hey, yeah, 25,000 is good enough? No. no. Are they going to say, put a different bolt diameter in? No. The only thing that's left is K. We're going to try and change K. All right, 500 foot pounds in reverse isn't going to do it. Let's just jack it right up to 900. We have to work this one out a little bit. Yeah, have a seat. This is a, one of those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. All right. So our previous experience had 500 foot pounds would have got us there, but we have to prove it out in the field. Torque without verification. Shall not be, not, yeah. No charts, no equations. Torque used without verification shall not be performed or something like that. 
I think that's then section eight. So if we did jack this up to 900 foot pounds to try and get above that 25 to 39,000 pounds of tension more, we most likely would have broken the bolt in torque, not tension. We didn't over tighten it. The Skidmore says we weren't too tight, but we would have twisted it too. Do we have a torque example, torque failure example here, Mike? Uh, yeah, we just made it. There we go. <laughs> so close up for me. So what you can see here is a spiral to the grain of the fracture. So people would say, hey, listen, we put it on 900 foot pounds, the bolt broke, it was too tight. No, it wasn't too tight. The K factor was so bad that we twisted the bolt into two pieces. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply some stick wax. This is a cutting tool lubricant, uh, tap and dot lubricant. And we're gonna do a few stripes on the washer face of the nut and the threads of the bolt. So the threads of the bolt have been waxed. Now the washer face of the nut. Now the threads are the obvious part because we know we have threads grinding against threads, but the washer face of the nut is also to grind against the washer itself, consuming most of our torquing effort as opposed to achieving bolt tension. So hopefully this will make our lives easier. And for our listeners, they just showed us the um, torsional failure of a bolt. And they showed essentially like as you break a bolt in half, essentially through torsion, there's essentially a circular pattern on both sides where it has sheared through. Um, and then what he has applied um, onto the Skidmore machine is the same rusted bolt, but now with a, a, essentially a wax on the external threads of the actual bolt and the internal threads of the nut to help, uh, I guess, reduce the K factor. So reduce the friction between the two surfaces. Said, said like a true engineer. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're back to 500 foot pounds. Hopefully we'll get more than the tension we achieved, which is about 25. And really what we're after is 39,000 pounds of tension or more, 39 tips. All right, and I'll look with the trigger now, you'll hear it. And I'll give it just a bump more and the gun shuts off for me. So there's 51,000 pounds of tension. There we go. Nice. That bolt was bad. We couldn't apply enough torque to it without twisting the bolt into two. So we lubricated it, just some simple wax to make it easier to get to the minimum bolt tension. 500 foot pounds in this case a greasy bolt, one that we've lubricated ourselves that got us up to 51,000. Right. Now it's important to realize that black fasteners do not come lubricated. You should now ask me, what do you mean they don't come lubricated? They don't come lubricated, as Mike said earlier, they've been quenched part of the heat treat process into a water soluble oil. That oil, the rule is, has to be oily to the touch, but as soon as you expose it to the air, since it's water-based, it starts to evaporate and disappear and give you rusty bolts. So bolts aren't pre-lubricated. Uh, galvanized nuts are pre-lubricated and then uh, twist-off bolts are pre-lubricated by the factory. Mike, how are we doing? We're doing good. So the, the main reason we always do this, especially for the field, is that so everyone understands, they always think torque is tight. Torque on the first go around or the first three go arounds, torque wasn't tight. Uh, but once Chris applied the, the wax, torque was tight. So you could never rely on torque. And that's why there's a lot of rules on how to apply it. You have, you have to test it every day, every faster, every combination of fasteners, and every tool. And every time you change an airline, let's say someone is doing a, uh, you know, they got a pneumatic wrench, they have two lines of hose. If they go to three lines of hose, they have to come down from the steel and test again. So torque can, is only a good method if you can do all your bolting in one or two days. Anything beyond that, you're, you're throwing money out the window. Yeah, and, and I think uh, that's, go ahead, Matt. I was gonna ask what the uh, alternatives was. Uh, if, they, if they're not doing it in two days, uh, what, what's, what are the other methods that they could use in terms of bolting that would be more efficient? or the different types of bolting? Well, there's the, uh, the, the twist off bolt, 
which is that funny little ended bolt. We got one sticking around. There we go. It's a bolt. It's got this final end, but this is again a torque-based device. This is where the manufacturer has filled, has figured out the K factor, where the gun that goes on here will grab this end as well as the hex of the nut, and when it when the fastener itself undergoes a certain amount of torque, a counter rotation will break that end up. So you'll be left, you know, this is a galvanized fastener. You'll be left with some raw steel when this thing snaps off. If you like, we could, we could do one of these for you. Uh, that one's essentially you twist it and then there's the, I guess the fuse in the bolt that will snap off. That tells you it's supposed to be, it's supposed to have reached its uh, desired tension, right? Right. And that's where it's same, similar to torque installation. It is, is a pure torque device where the manufacturer has says, this is the K value, you know, this range for this bolt, which means you have to use it in as manufactured delivered condition. If I take those bolts out, stuff them in the steel, come back tomorrow, that K factor has changed. And I, I'm supposed to take those bolts out and retest them. So when using TC bolts, they're, they're quick and easy to use. Uh, but the problem is, they will give you the amount of pretension you need, you know, like we need 39,000 pounds, only if they're as manufactured. Mm. Any degradation of that lubricant or that, that uh, yeah, the lube that's on there changes the whole faster. It just won't work. But the end still shears off, which is what the inspector is looking after. They want to make sure that the splined end has been properly severed. Let's, I'll show you one. All right. You want to see one? Yeah. I'm curious. I've, I've specified these, but I haven't seen them used. All right. <laughs> Matt, so what's in it for you? When you specify a bolting system, there's five pre-approved methods of installation. You need a PC bolt? No, I got one right here. Okay. I'm going to use this one. You're going to bolt yeah, it. Yeah, for us as the engineer, it, it does depend on the application, on the type of beam. Uh, I mean, just the typical ones are just gravity holding up, uh, you know, uh, typical beams and whatnot. So for these typical standard ones, for us, we do want to see, obviously, the tension, but also um, what other effects there are. I know for, like, the TC bolts, uh, we typically approve them, but I've also heard like some other things where uh, I think down the road, since they are pre-tensioned, uh, you might hear like banging because uh, maybe further down the line, it slips, like the bolt slips, and then you'll hear like a bang. But structurally, uh, it's not a problem. It's kind of just like, it's scary. So in terms of the structural soundness of it, we're, we're fine with it, but uh Specifically with the TC bolts, I mean, I know that's something that we've heard out in, out in um, in some of the reports. They might slip later down the line, and if slip isn't critical, uh, that's fine structurally. So engineering it will uh, have, uh, let's see, snug tight connections mm -hmm. where the bolt is inserted into the hole, and the bolt's only tight enough to bring the steel plies into firm contact. Usually that's done with hex heads, and we do see some people occasionally use TC bolts to snug with anyway, because they're tooled up for it. They own the gun, they have the bolts. Then there's pre-tension connections and slip critical connections. Both of those require bolts to be pre-tensioned or fully tightened before the connection goes live or sees external forces. Now, an engineer would select one of those systems to tension the bolts, in your case, TC bolts, but the question again is, why would you select one system over the other? Is one guaranteeing you that the bolts have been pre-tensioned or are you leaving it up to the craft and the field to take care of? Uh, for us, we typically go with, uh, uh, it, we usually get requests for those. So we usually have uh, a method, a typical method for typical bolts in our specifications, but we'll often get requests from the field. Hey, can we use this type of system? For example, the TC bolts. 
Uh, could we use that because it's better for them out in the field for uh, whatever reason? And then that's when we have to dig into, you know, the specifications. Uh, what do these bolts do? And the, the RCSC. And that's when we have to see, okay, does that is does that meet the intent of our structural design for this connection? So it's you for, for my from my experience, it is usually just a, a field uh, suggestion, and that, that's when we have to do research on if it's structurally acceptable or not. All right, let's break one. So we're going to advance it until the end shears off using the proper installation tool. But what is the inspection requirement for a TC bolt? To verify that it's been tensioned. All right. It's at the end's been sheared off. Mm -hmm. So we're going to advance that. So the final one broke off. But unfortunately, we're only at 30,000 pounds. But you wouldn't and be able to tell that in the field then, right? Oh. Out in the field, they don't measure. Oh, okay. There that, you go. Right? <laughs> and then you just, you're, okay, you're it's sheared off. It should be good. The inspector yeah. needs to verify that the splined end's been properly severed, which it has mm -hmm. been. All right. Here is what's in the AISC RCSC uh, inspection. If, this, if the end fell off or came off, that's all you inspect for. So TC bolts, unfortunately, will always give you good news whether they work or not. They yeah, actually use the bolt shears off. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll always shear off. In this picture on my computer, the rusty bolts, those are all going to shear off. You will actually, your job will go faster if they're rusty because it'll just shear off sooner. But unfortunately, as that inspection says, if the end was twisted off, that's all you're required to, to look for as an inspector. And it's one of those flaws in the AISC RCSC document. Whereas, you know, the end off doesn't mean anything. It means you achieve, you hit some torque value, but doesn't necessarily mean you hit the tension, the pretension. I see. So maybe with a, a rusted bolt, a rusted TC bolt, it may not hit those numbers, but oh, it will it's not. off. So right. hey, it's technically okay by inspection. Right. And that's, and that's unfortunate. You know, uh, the AISC and the RCSC committee, they know this. Uh, typically what will happen is someone will have, take the brand new TC bolts, put them in a skid more, tighten them three times, make sure they're good. You know, then you're done. You don't have to do those tightening every day like you're supposed to with a calibrated wrench. Unfortunately, that only means it works for the, in the condition they were delivered. Not necessarily the condition they're in when they're up in the steel, waiting for some surveying or something. When you final tension them, that K factor is supposed to be where the manufacturer designed it to be, but it, in a lot of cases, it's not. Field exposure will degradate and affect the K factor. A 10 degree uh, shift in temperature will affect the K factor. If it's raining out, it will affect the K factor. So TC bolts, a lot of times will give you the best news if you chest them new, but in the steel work, all you have to do is check for broken ends. And so for our engineers who may have a preference for this type of bolting, just due to the fact that it's very clear that they have been pre-tensioned regardless of K-factor, you know, what's something that should be maybe like a, a best practice for them um, if they want to have these used on their site? Like, should there be a day of testing uh, that they require in order to, main, to understand the K-factor and the torque? associated with the, the pre-tensioning load? Ideally, they should, they should stuff them, snug them, snap them in as delivered condition. If, if a day or two has to pass, you're supposed to pull the bolts out and test them to make sure they're, they're still gonna, they're, that, that, that they pass. You know, so as the sooner you snap the ends off, uh, you know, the sooner you take out a keg and snap the ends off, the better. Anything else, you know, between the frost in the morning and the sun in the afternoon is no real guarantees that you will get that minimum required tension for AISC RCSC. So RCSC does not prescribe a timeline. They just say if the condition of the fastener has changed, testing should be re-performed. And do you have any advice for 
structural engineers that are specifying these bolts and uh, with your experience out in the field and with these bolts, are there any things that you wish uh, engineers would know more of or tips on how to specify or things to watch out for? It's just that they're torque based. It, they're not, and again, ASTM has changed the name of them from twist off tension controls just to twist off because they're torque based. So they have to be, as Mike said earlier, installed in the as manufactured condition. If that changes, you can't go backwards and relubricate. You should retest to verify that you're still at 105% of min insulation tension or more in your hydraulic load cell or your skid more, some sort of bolt tension measuring device. Yeah, I think that was one of my big takeaways was yeah, just because it's torque based, it's not always going to reach the specified tension. And even though some of these tests, yeah, they, they may not, but it's well, let's good say to the, know that. The biggest downside to bolting is that torque isn't tight, no matter if you're using a, well, torque can be tight, as Mike would tell me. Torque can be tight, but you have to keep the fasteners in the as delivered condition hex set assembly, store them, keep them out of the weather. If you treat them like a commodity item, they'll come to bite in the backside. So we want to store our bolts. We want to keep them out of the weather. When we can apply additional lubricant to make it easier, requires less torque to get to the same tension or achieve more tension with less effort even. So that and training the craft are some of the more typical or critical things we need to look after in the field to make sure that they know they're after bolt tension, not torque. And just because the gun stalled doesn't mean we've tensioned bolts. Yeah, as, as you've shown, uh, great, de great demonstrations. And uh, before we finish off, was there anything else that uh, you wanted to add or, or show us before uh, we finish off here? Well, uh, we make direct tension indicators, which is one of the four uh, five bolting methods. And what it is, it's, a, it's a tension based. You need a, as much torque as it takes to tighten it and for the DTI to indicate. So we'll show you that real quick. Okay. The DTI is added to, to an assembly. You got your bolt, your nut, your washer, and then you have to add a direct tension indicator. That's what DTI stands for. So 78325 bolt and the Durasquare DTI, which like we looked at, is just a bumpy washer. Mm -hmm. But because it's got bumps, that means it has cavities where we put this little orange goo in there, right? So basically for a Durasquare DTI, you tighten it until the goo comes out. I and see you lubricate it. I lubricate Just it. Just make it easy. And then a little, little bit. You basically tighten it till the goo comes out, and then you're done. It's torque independent. Doesn't matter what my gun is set on. So when the goo comes out, my bolt is tight. I can ignore torque values. Uh, I can ignore torque tables. I don't need a special tool. I can do it with this electric wrench, a pneumatic wrench, even a hand wrench. Ah, pretty cool. So it's for, for our listeners that are listening, there's essentially uh, a washer that has cavities in it that has goo in it. And you're essentially tensioning the bolt until that that goo comes out, but what essentially means is that it's tension based. So when that washer and you see all the, the goo come out, the orange goo, that means it's it's tensioned properly. It's not torque based. It's it has that compression or that tension inside that washer. And that's a good indicator. And that yeah, that, that's pretty cool. So it's it's that it's basically measuring what the engineers want. It's achieving that tension that the engineers want. Yeah, it's a single use mechanical load cell that indicates tension regardless of the torque. So it's like a skid more for each and every bolt. 
So the iron worker, the inspector, and the owner can see that the bolts have been tensioned. And if the inspector, sorry, if the engineer wants to come out, have a look, they can see as well that the tension that they want, that they've specified has been achieved. Very cool. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think that was kind of just the, the segue into, hey, here's a, a more direct way to measure that tension instead of just torque. Right. Yeah, thanks, Chris, Mike. Uh, I really appreciate this. I know for, especially for the engineers out there that we don't get to do a lot of the, or, or witness some of the bolt installation. I just wanted to thank both of you for, for demonstrating that and uh, definitely learned something uh, today about the field and the, the torque installation. So definitely appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thanks appreciate you reaching out. Absolutely. All right, gentlemen. Have a good one. Thank you again. All right. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We'd love to hear your feedback, comments, and or questions. To leave them, please visit structuralengineeringchannel.com. There you'll find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, which is episode number 88, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Until next time, we wish you the best in all of your structural engineering endeavors.